Hey, this is Steve Bloom, and you are listening to the GeekCast Radio Network. Hello and welcome to Altered Geek Unlimited, episode 28. I'm your host, Steve Megatron Phillips, and joining me this week is... Dave, Jim, and Mike. Hello. Hello. Yes, we return again. Uh, yes. With many things behind the scenes going on over here at GeekCast yeah. Radio for year five. Um, I have a feeling that people will be pleasantly surprised um, for the... Year five episode of Geekcast Radio. Episode sixty five. That's right. It's coming up in June. Yes. So it it will be an interesting one to say the least when that time frame comes along. Yep. Um. The awards are still going on uh, for a limited time. So be sure to check that out. Uh, they will be done by next week yep so that gives you your small window of opportunity to finish it off uh if you have any last minute votes or you have anybody that you want to stack the deck for uh now would be your time (laughs) um so there's that uh any other housekeeping that you can think of off um, not really. Um, the new site design is is pretty much almost ready. We're just waiting for the anniversary date to launch. Uh, new site's going to be entirely interactive. Uh, it's going to be pretty awesome for you guys. Yeah, I I'm chomping at the bit. I can't actually wait to show it off. I'm surprised he hasn't actually published it now, ladies and gentlemen. I'll tell you that thoughts <laughs> cross my mind. Don't. I'm not going Don't to. Even. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, it, it has crossed my mind. I have to jump on the, if I have to jump on the back of a Greyhound to get up there to make you to stop making you from hitting that button, I will. <laughs> oh, I know. I like I said, I I won't. Just on principle that. I know it needs to wait, but yes, it I needs to wait. I don't want to wait. <laughs> um, so there is that. Uh, got a couple of uh, uh, this episode's going to be a little bit different, um, only for the fact that uh, I'm going to cover. Uh, well, like both of us are going to cover some different stuff, and then um, I'm going to have a couple of little interview or not interview DVD clips uh reviewing Batman or Beware the Batman and Batman the Brave and the Bold. That's right. Uh DVD sets which will be inserted as clips later on. Uh so there will be that as well. Um so I think with that we will jump into some media news. Yeah, um, 17 X-Men Days of Future Past character photos. Oh, boy. Hey, look, John Oates is in the movie. <laughs> what did you think about all those different images? Um, <laughs> I, I, I still, I, I don't care what anyone says about Last Stand. I still think Kelsey Grammer did the best Beast. The, the, this kid just doesn't, doesn't, I understand he's supposed to be a younger version of Beast. He just doesn't look right to me. Um, Jackman is Wolverine. He, in this picture, he almost reminds me of the old man Logan from the, the X-Men run old man Logan. Uh, that, that story, as far as the way his face is and he's kind of all gray and well, it's, everything it's else. got that nice old man Logan feel from yeah. days of futures past. Yeah, that's true. Um, Magneto and Professor X look like they could be twins because their suits are almost exactly the same. Uh, Mystique looks great. Um, wow, that's who they got to play Bishop? Holy crap. Yeah. 
Wow. Holy crap. <laughs> Fitting, actually. Yes. Um, why? Why did they have her do the short hair again? Oh, God. Come on, Halle well, Berry. I, I heard that she's only in it for fan service. She's not actually in it in it. Yeah, I, I heard that about a lot of these characters, and I know that some of them are going to play a major role, like Wolverine obviously plays a major role. Um, but I, I don't know. The rest of the designs look great. Um, I like them. I'm, just, I'm to the point now where give me the movie. <laughs> yep, uh, I'm, I'm kind of ready to see it at this point. Um, should be interesting to see how this film actually plays out. So jumping into some more... Uh, did you see the uh, article with the new Harvey Bullock? Yeah, that was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I, I actually can't wait to see them play in this. Um, I guess he said uh, his version of Har- Harvey is, uh, in comparison to iteration seen in the comic and the animated series, uh, it's... Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's a lot darker. <laughs> Yeah. So, but I mean, it, it makes sense with the way that his look is, and the way that, because I don't think Fox is gonna do Gotham. I don't think they're gonna do it bright and sunny. They're gonna do it dark, like it should be done dark. Um, but um, yeah, no, I mean, I'm you know, again, it's just one of those things where I so far I think all of the casting that I've seen for Gotham looks really, really good for what they're trying to put together. Um, I just don't want them to use the crux of the Joker at all. Yeah, I don't I want don't, to see his I character don't... show up at all because he's a reaction to Batman. Yeah. You know, I, I don't care if people on Facebook post an image of Will, of uh, Willem Dafoe, the former Green Goblin, that looks good enough for being a new joke. I... I I'll have to send you that. I don't. I don't think you saw that, but I'll have to send it to you. There was a picture on on Facebook. I'm trying to think. Um, uh, there's a picture on Facebook of uh, Bat Maniac shared it. Isn't he it's, like photoshopped to look like Joker? He's photoshopped. To, it, it it's him in like a like a comic drawing, and then a comic drawing of the Joker as him, and then the bottom image is his real face and then it's mocked up to look like the Joker. And I just, no, we do not need, we do not need Norman Osborn from the original Spider-Man movie to be the Joker. We just don't. Well, I mean, I could, I mean, I don't want him as it honestly, but um, Mm -hmm. I, I really don't want to see the Joker at all in Gotham unless Batman is already introduced. Yeah. Because, like I said, he's a reaction. It's not... Yeah, I've seen those images. It's creepy. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, that's pretty creepy. Yeah. Um, wow. I'm, I'm yeah. scarred now. Okay, so... I'm going to put those in the... Scarred, I'm going to yeah. put those in the episode post. Um, yeah, so everyone else can be scarred along with us. While he's uh, scarred, apparently... Uh, Comcast and Time Warner merger is good for competition and consumers. Oh, boy. Here we go. Uh, Let's see here. Basically, with all their flaws, cable companies present an easy target for politicians, and the pending antitrust review provides a forum to score points with constituents. None of this chest-pounding will lower cable bills or improve service. It may actually hurt honest competition in the long run. Uh... Okay, you and I talked about this off air. We talked about what we're paying and what we're. I mean, we talked about some of it on air last week, but we also, yeah, we did talk about some of it off air. Well, you know, you're you're getting right now fifty megs for forty bucks, right? Currently, because it's a um, because it's a special. special. It's a four person special. No, it's a poor person special. Oh, it's oh okay. I was gonna say, wait a second here. Uh, so you're getting 50 megs for $40 until March 6th. And then I'm going, uh, because I didn't want to pay 60 some dollars. Mm -hmm. Um, I killed my TV 
part of it, and I dropped my internet from 50 down to 25. So it's going to be 39. Okay. Well, for me, this is so lame. Um, my actual... Uh, <laughs> My actual charges, because I got back on a special, is like forty six ninety nine, I believe, for twenty megs. And this is I'm with Time Warner, you're with Comcast. So if Comcast takes over Time Warner, maybe I can get the fifty megs for forty bucks, because I wouldn't mind spending forty. But if I'm going to spend forty six ninety nine on twenty megs, I sure as hell am not going to mind spending forty bucks on fifty megs. Well, it's only for six months to a year. Right, and then after that, they jack it up to like sixty or seventy dollars. But you can still call and and try to get, you know, get rebundled. I guess. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I mean, it's just it's just crazy. I I mean, I'm not saying that you know twenty meg service needs to be ten dollars. I'm just like I'm sorry, forty dollars for twenty meg service that just doesn't seem right to me at all. Uh, I don't know where and. Because they're higher packages, like fifty meg is probably even on even on the special fifty meg is probably twenty bucks or not not I'm sorry seventy dollars or something or other like that here with Time Warner. So I don't know. Um, oh no, I take it back. <laughs> the forty four net the forty four ninety nine is for my cable is for my TV. I'm paying sixty dollars for twenty meg service, and you're paying thirty bucks for fifty. Or forty dollars for fifty. That's that's a little wrong, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm kind of happy at this point that that uh, Comcast is going to take over Time well, Warner. And I've never taken this into consideration before, and they list it in the article as well. Mm-hmm. Is that some of the stations themselves, yeah. which is why we have these dumbass bundles? Mm-hmm. Um, because let's face it. I mean, Comcast. Yeah, they may be evil, but they're not like tyrannical evil like some of the TV stations are. Like. They list in here that six months ago, CBS demanded Time Warner pay more for CBS content from fifty cents to two dollars per subscriber. Yeah, and Time Warner told them to bite me and kill them for a month, but lost three hundred thousand subscribers, and CBS won out anyway. But yeah. Comcast, being the giant conglomerate that they are, owning Universal, owning NBC, mm-hmm. you know, uh, then owning Time Warner kind of has a hell of a lot more weight to pull so they can actually tell them, no, you can bite me because we own everything. Yeah. (laughs) So, I mean, it could help keep the cable prices lower as it states in there as well. So, I mean, I can see kind of both ends of the the spectrum. It kind of scares me because with no competition means that they could charge whatever they want. Yeah, that's true. But it also leads to that extent that they're so big that nobody's going to screw with them, so they might be able to keep their prices lower and actually give people better deals Mm -hmm. um and honestly our our you know internet speeds are snail's pace compared to um foreign countries yeah we're like way back we're paying entirely too much money for the amount of bandwidth we get now compared to these other countries so i mean it's kind of a it's kind of a toss-up. It's going to be an interesting year to see what kind of happens because with Google stepping more into that realm and you know Comcast yeah. doing this, I mean it's it's going to be a very interesting year watching what happens with the the cable and the internet um, speeds. Yeah, it really, really is. I mean, it's funny that you say that we're actually slower than some of the other foreign countries, which I, I find that. Okay, maybe Canada, but well, you know, it, there's um, actually all the a lot of the uh, like China and Japan yeah. and all those. They have a lot higher bandwidth than we do. Yeah, that's true. Um, I don't know. It just it just kind of makes me mad that it's like it makes no sense to me why with Time Warner I have to pay. Sixty dollars a month for twenty megs. When you're with Comcast and you pay forty bucks for fifty megs, that that just doesn't seem right. <laughs> no, I agree. Um, so, uh, uh, what's next? Well, kind of want to touch on this. 
it's a uh, one tweak that can make your Windows PC virtually invulnerable. And I found this oh, kind of interesting boy. because it does make sense. Mm -hmm. um, they stated that, you know, Microsoft published there's 147 vulnerabilities in 2013 that were rated as critical. Um, mm -hmm. Which it's kind of difficult to guard against anything anyway. But mm -hmm. it said that if you remove administrative rights, it says that the exact number was 92% of vulnerability, but that brings the number of threats from 147 down to 12. Which hmm. leads me to believe that, as it states, if you have an administrator account, create mm -hmm. standard user accounts that you run off of. The administrator is the one that you do your updates and install your programs and everything else. Your standard is the one that gets to use everything. Mm -hmm. And if you're using your standard one and you're surfing the internet and it downloads a virus, it doesn't have any legs to grow. It doesn't infect anything because it can't run. Ah, so interesting. So that actually makes a heck of a lot more sense. And especially with the user access control, the UAC, which pops up and annoys people when you're trying to run programs sometimes mm -hmm. or delete files. Um, I myself, I turn it off. Because I don't want to see the mm -hmm. notification every time I go to load something. It bothers me, and I know yeah. what I'm doing, so I really don't care. Um, yeah. <laughs> whereas, like, Windows Vista, you can't shut it off. It won't let you. But Windows 7 and 8, it lets you do that. So, thankfully, um, I'm getting my first taste of Windows 8 at the moment because we just got a new laptop, and it came with Windows 8, which I installed. Um, IOBit.com's, uh, it's a... Uh, What's it called? Um, start menu eight. Mm -hmm. It basically restores the start menu and lets you boot directly to the desktop, bypassing the Metro interface. Very cool. Yeah, I love it because I did that as soon as I installed it, and now I can actually use it like Windows Seven, and I made everything run like Windows Seven, so I can get to everything faster. But anyways, um, as far as the uh, uh, the flaw is concerned, it says that. Uh, you know, like everybody that used Windows XP, obviously it's more vulnerable because it lacks all the advanced security. Well, it's expired anyway. It doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, Windows XP has died. They killed it. Yeah, and Vista nobody cares about. So, I mean, that pretty much died. No. Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, having Windows 7 and 8, if you do this, it actually makes a lot more sense. And uh, I actually may set that up on the new laptop that we just got because... Um, I mean, not that I really have to worry about it all that much in my house because we don't really do anything. Yeah. But uh, it's a good preventative measure in any case because there's some times where you can access something and um, lo and behold, it downloads a virus and you didn't know. Mm -hmm. So there's there's that aspect. But um, no, I definitely thought that that was kind of an interesting story that uh, people should take into consideration when they're... Um, setting up a new PC or setting up their current one. Most definitely. The last thing I, I wanted to bring up, I, I found this, I think I found it on Facebook or something. I, I don't know. Somebody, I believe, I believe it was David Wise, actually, writer of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, that I saw this. He, he linked to it. Wireless system could offer a private fast lane. Uh, and a spacious, uh, okay, let's see. Basically, this guy is creating, uh, in the demonstration, uh, showed off technology that Mr. Perlman, a serial entrepreneur and inventor who sold web TV to Microsoft for more than $500 million in the late 1990s, contends would give mobile users far faster cellular network speeds with fewer dropped phone calls and other annoyances, even in stadiums, other places where thousands of people use mobile phones at the same time. This is as big a change to wireless as tubes to transistor was to electronics, Mr. Perlman said recently. Uh, the technology called P-Cell is one of many techniques that companies are looking at to address the rising public appetite for mobile data, especially video. Watching movies, TV shows, and other clips on the go is catching on in a big way, as mobile devices with bigger, sharper screens become popular and more video is available online. 
But because of the increasing demand, cellular networks are regularly overloaded. In the United States last year, the average mobile phone user consumed 1.2 gigabytes of data a month over cellular networks, nearly double the average amount in 2012. Um, this, this could be pretty cool. I mean, if you could basically say goodbye to the cell phone companies, that would be awesome. Yeah, the cell phone companies, I actually love that. Uh, they could possibly go away <laughs> to some yes. extent. I can't yes. stand some of them. <laughs> Sprint. Um, yes. so, I mean, there's that aspect, but, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I'm I'm welcoming any kind of new thing that could take away all the problems we've been having over the last decade with all these companies, whether it be cable or or cell phone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I myself don't have a smartphone anymore because I just think it's I. I don't go anywhere enough to use everything. Like, sure, I, I like the iPhones and all that stuff, but I don't go out enough to warrant a $90 a month cell phone bill. I just don't. So, you know, it's just one of those things for me. What kind of feedback did we get this week? Well, I need to stop doing that. I get so loud. My wife sends me texts every now and again. You're too loud. I can hear you upstairs. Um <laughs> And I'm sure it hurts people's ears to some degree. <laughs> um, well, some of the the responses are are about um, well, Power Rangers and cable. Uh, Super Film Fan ninety eight says uh, that he cut the cord a long time ago. Uh, doesn't have cable anymore. Comcast has seen the writing on the wall and trying to figure out what their future life will be. Uh, they need to create reasons for people to have cable. And my worry is that if they are the only party in town, what it could be for online material. Will they force studios to limit online content even more? That's my worry. Yeah. I can kind of get on board with that. Um, oh, yeah. But um, we're already starting to see, and, and I posted this earlier and probably should have included it, but um, about Netflix's decline. Yes. It's sad but true. They're kind of slowly taking a, a nosedive. Well, that's because they're so limited in what they can add and what they... they're Because Netflix is governed by contracts with studios. And if you don't have a contract for a certain amount of time, then you don't have that show on Netflix or you don't have that movie on Netflix. I wish we lived in a world where everything could just go to Hulu and Netflix immediately as soon as it, as soon as it gets a physical copy release... DVD, Blu-ray, whatever, it's able to go on Netflix or Hulu or whatever you... I mean, movies come out on iTunes all the time. Okay, granted, I know iTunes is a little bit bigger because it's Apple, but, I mean, movies and TV shows come out on iTunes all the time. And I don't see why Netflix has to wait six months to a year. Like, I am just... When did uh, Olympus Has Fallen come out? Uh, it was sometime last year. Sometime last year, it only got added to Netflix, I believe, within the last two or three months. Like, right around the holidays is when it got added to Netflix. So, I don't get why, you know, in, in the olden days, and by the olden days, I mean, like, the late 90s or so, or, you know, mid to late 90s, you had a film in theaters. Six months to eight months, you would get it on DVD. Okay, so... Why is it now that if six, after eight, let's say eight months, just to be safe, a movie or TV show comes out on DVD, why can't we immediately have it on streaming? If, we, if we're paying for a streaming service, why can't we have it on streaming the same day the, the physical copy comes out? Why does Netflix or Hulu or whoever have to wait another eight months or another six months or another half a year or whatever, for it to be able to stream on that. That's one thing I don't get about the Netflix and, 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 and all that contracts. Whereas Hulu is like, hey, you want your latest TV show from last night? It's here on Hulu. Or it's here on Hulu Plus. You know, pay us the same seven ninety nine you get that you're paying on Netflix. I'm sorry, I, I like Hulu, don't get me wrong. 
I use Hulu. I have to use Hulu now to watch uh, Masters of the Universe for Tales of the Tales of Eternia podcast since Netflix's contract ran out on it. Um, but at the same time, I'm not going to sit here and pay money I don't have. I mean, Netflix. I've been I've been I've been paying for it for a couple of years now, so I'm used to not you know I'm used to that eight dollars or whatever it is to come out of my budget every month. I'm not going to add on top of that another eight dollars and spend sixteen dollars a month for two services. I, I I'm just not going to do that. I, I just can't do that with the budget that I have, you know. So I don't know. It's just I I wish that the timeline was a little bit different on how the streaming media got their their media. I, I just wish that was a little different. Um, and I don't I don't I don't know what people can do to change it though that's the only thing yeah i i don't really know i mean it's yeah i i just <laughs> yeah it's crazy yep so moving on uh caleb browning says did you guys hear about the mmpr series they're doing which is supposed to be more grown-up version of the rangers it's not official it's on kickstarter um, and it's like a film that's coming out soonish. Yeah, I'd seen something about it a couple months ago, um, but it wasn't anything I really paid attention to. I actually commented back to Caleb and I said, "As long as as long as Jason David Frank's involved, I'll watch it. If not, I don't know if I'll watch it." <laughs> yeah, I don't think he is involved. I don't think so either. Not, not especially now that he has the his series on on Bat in the Sun, uh, My Morphin Life, which the first episode just went up a uh, uh, day before we recorded this episode. Yeah, it's I, I. The interesting thing about this MMPR thing is mm-hmm. the the gist of it is it's a fan film, obviously. Um, not tied to anything else, but uh, it says the Power Rangers have vanished. Lord Zed, their greatest enemy, has been defeated. The world is saved. Tommy Oliver, no longer the White Rangers, in exile, running, hiding, waiting for evil to find him again. It says the world mm-hmm. has moved on. Now, 20 years later, Lord Zed has returned. Um, and he's looking for revenge against Tommy. Uh, so it's like a Lord Zed Tommy battle, essentially. And Tommy like creates said, the new Power Rangers. Well, that could be cool, but it can only be cool if they get the actual guy to play Tommy. You know, it, if they're going to find some look-alike, then no thank you. You know, it's it's great if other fans want to check it out, and I think it's going to be really cool if it's a darker series than what, we, than what Saban has been giving us. But if JDF isn't involved... At all, and I haven't heard anything that he is or he isn't. Um, maybe more development needs to be made, or I, I don't know what's going on. But it just—if he's not Tommy, then I don't care. Um, I guess as far as the uh, um, composer is concerned, it says Ron Wasserman. Cool, that'll work. Um, it's kind of interesting. They've got older people playing the rangers they got a chick playing a blue ranger and uh yellow and pink and then they've got uh got a guy playing lord zed and then there's uh some colonel and then uh there's a guy playing the voice oh robert axelrod's playing the voice of lord zed yeah which is cool and then uh um, voice of Zordon is going to be returning. Oh, David Fielding. Yep, very cool. Very uh, cool. As Zordon. Uh, wow, that's kind of neat. But they don't have anything about Tommy's character in there. Or you, you mean his actor? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tommy or Jason David Frank. I don't see either name yeah. listed. Which, if that's like a trump card that they're holding. Maybe. Could be. I would be down for that. Yeah. Definitely something to keep keep an eye on. Yep. I will keep my eye out on that. Um, 
So, moving on to the next piece. Um, Freddy Savage says he is with us also. He uh, stopped using cable a long time ago. Uh, but he does the streaming swap with a bunch of friends. Uh, like you, One has Hulu, one has Amazon, one has Netflix, and so on. Um, that way you get to share all the various content. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Very um, cool. Connor Murphy says, this Gotham series has me super confused on how it's going to work. It's not quite Smallville, not quite Arrow, someplace in between. Which is basically what you said earlier. Uh, (laughs) So, also, if Batman villains can be defeated without Batman, doesn't that kind of destroy the point of Batman? Well, I... If people have listened to Legends of the Dark Knight at all, or if they've listened to any other time I've talked about the Batman villains... The Penguin, to me, he's not a super criminal. I don't care what Commissioner Gordon or Chief O'Hara from the 66 television series say. The Penguin is a crime boss with a trick umbrella and a theme, you know, a, a, a Penguin theme to him. I mean, he, he's a man. He's a man, just like Batman is. So I could see... If they were going to go for the Joker, hopefully they won't. Um, But what I've seen so far from Gotham, from the casting, is it's mostly crime, you know, mob bosses and crime crime syndicates and stuff like that. So, Connor, as far as how it's going to go, as far as what I understand from what I've read, Bruce at the beginning of the series is going to be 11 or 12. Gordon is going to be either a lieutenant or a detective or something. I, I believe it's going to be Detective Gordon, and he's going to he's going to rise in the ranks of the GCPD. And I guess what their goal, their ultimate goal, is to carry it all the way through until Bruce is an adult and he becomes Batman. And maybe they'll end the series there. I don't know. I just hope that if they find an actor, that by the time they get to him becoming Batman. There isn't this crap of no, no flying, no tights. Well, okay, granted, Batman doesn't fly, but I'm I'm using Smallville as an example. It was like, you know, no flying, no tights. I'm I'm hoping that we actually see a Batman suit on television. That would um, be nice. Or if if Fox and Warner Brothers really want to do it justice, no pun intended. <laughs> If they really want to do it justice, what you do is you take whoever kid you cast as Bruce Wayne, have him grow up, focus on the GCPD and all that stuff, have Bruce kind of in the background as a kid as he gets older and older and older, whatever, the final episode or the final season, yeah, you're going to love this, depending if this person is still under contract. You bring the Affleck duck in, and then you have Ben as Batman on TV. That would be amazing. They'll never do it, but yeah. I know. I know they'll never do it, but it's because they don't like doing smart things. But anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) All right. Um... Dragon O says, uh, for me, the best way to get good deals is by calling up and saying you were canceling, not asking for a better deal. Just say you wish to cancel your service. Um, but uh, he says, key is you have to be willing to cancel services, though, because they might call your bluff, which for the most part, they do nowadays. Yeah, uh, they don't give a rip. Uh, I find arguing with them on Twitter has great results. Um, most of the time, mm-hmm. uh, there's times where that doesn't work one iota and they're like, Hey, 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 hey bite me. You know, they'll, <laughs> they'll, they'll quiet you down on the public channel and then say, send us a DM with your information and they'll get back to you. Never. Unless you, uh, send them a reminder saying, Hey, you going to actually do something. Yeah. Um, which I always have to hit them up like a day or so later. <laughs> and then they finally send somebody calling my way, which um, they used to send. No offense to anybody, but um, people who can't speak English, foreign, like not from the continental United States. Like, so again, not trying to. 
Hello, I am Apu. Welcome to the Quickie Well, I mean, you? there's there's <laughs> people like that in the United States, so that's why I'm kind of not trying to sound like that, it, even though it's difficult. Um, <laughs> but uh, I I just, I for one, you can understand everything they say. That they don't feel like they're reading off a script, too. Um, they seem to keep you calmer. I find, but even though they're not going to actually really do all that much for you, like they offered me, oh, we'll uh, discount your bill ten dollars for six months when it goes up. So I would have still been paying sixty bucks a month instead of forty eight. Um, yeah. Then their other solution to me was, uh, well, you can upgrade to this, or you can, and I, I said, well, what is it without, you know, the cable TV and the uh with my internet and they said well then your internet would go up to $78 for the 50 meg and i'm like mm, i'm like uh so what would it be if i downgraded to 25 they're like well we can give you 39.99 for the uh the uh 25 megabyte internet for 6 months which means in 6 months i'll be up shit crick again um mm-hmm. But it gives me a little time because I'm hoping to get a house between now and then, and then I can cancel my service and then start up and get a whole year. Whole year, yeah. Um, and ho- hopefully, wherever I move, I have the option of AT and T, so I can flip back and forth. <laughs> Whereas right now, I only have the option of uh, Frontier Communications or Comcast, yeah. and Frontier only offers 12 megabyte internet for the oh. same as what I'll be paying for 25 at Comcast. Wow. So, and they don't offer cable because they're dish. So. Yeah, I was like, yeah. eh, and so I'm gonna stick with Comcast uh, probably, but it's it's you know, a pain. If the complex that I live in, if they allowed me to put a a a satellite dish on the building, I would so go back to Directv because every time I see Directv ads or every time I see the little mailers in the mailbox, it's like it has William Shatner what? on it. No. No, <laughs> it's like twenty four ninety nine. The the latest deal, which I I threw out because I'm not. I I just can't. I can't. I, they won't even let me get it here. Anyways, they won't let it, they won't let dishes go in the building. So it's not like I can get it anyway. But the latest deal in the mail that I received was twenty four ninety nine for a two year savings. So it would be, it's basically a two year deal. Twenty four ninety nine for one hundred and thirty channels, um, which isn't bad. Uh, but still it's like, I don't understand. I know people are intelligent. I know they are, but some of these people at Time Warner, when I, okay, my apartment used to be a part of the, the, um, the group home I used to be associated with when I was younger. So, uh, it's weird that they had about seven years ago they had a deal with uh, Insight at the time. Insight was bought out by Time Warner here in Louisville, Kentucky. They had a business account deal with with Insight where they would have basic cable in X number of apartments for this many years or whatever else. Apparently, just recently they canceled this contract. Yet I'm still getting. Stuff that says Boys Haven Res D with my address on it, and I'm like, this account isn't even mine. It's not even in service, as far as I know. Earlier today, as we're recording this podcast, earlier today, I spent two and a half hours on the phone with Time Warner representatives trying to get to someone who could actually help me. They're like, oh, well. You don't have the account number. Okay, well, if it's a business account, go over to the business department. I had, I then had the account number because I found it amongst some papers. Uh, and uh, they're like, oh, okay, well, this is showing as a residential account, so let me put you over there. So another five minutes on hold. And as five minutes on hold, it was like, oh, crap. And then click. The thing died. They hung up on me, the bastards. <laughs> so I called back. So I called back, and I'm not meaning to drag this show on, but I'm just I'm explaining to you people. And I know most people know what it is to go through with a cable company, but like it just makes – and people wonder why I'm so angry sometimes because people – by the time I got to a guy where I was like, okay, look, you're the seventh person I've talked to. I am getting bills – 
at my address from your company for an account that is not mine. Stop sending me these bills, please. You know, I, I mean, I, I was literally clenching, talking through clenched teeth by the time I got to the seventh guy. And it's like, oh, my God. So hopefully it's straightened out now. But, yeah, no, cable companies, oh, it's crazy. Yeah. Alrighty. Um, Rachel Manning says, I do something similar. The only shows I watch when it comes out are Walking Dead and Game of Thrones because I know if I don't, it will be spoiled for me. Other than that, I stream. Yep. Um, Justin Washington says, just to mm. clear things up a bit regarding my comment last week, my biggest issue was the repetitiveness of the episode. You said the same thing on multiple occasions instead expanding the complaint into something richer. Sure, you mentioned too much news is overblown, which is very true, but instead of just saying that, perhaps you could have discussed why you think that is, why we complain about it, yet still clamor for it, and talk about the legitimacy of entertainment news. It does sound like you will be covering that on some point in an upcoming GCRN episode, so I'm very much looking forward to that one. Now on to more important things like this episode. Great episode again, and I echo your complaints with cable companies not appreciating current customers. It's not only cable, but phone companies too. Once they have you on a contract, they'll do any or do nothing to help you out. They want mm. us to be loyal to them and not them loyal to us. It's crazy. Yeah, it's very crazy. Those greedy bastards. <laughs> Which they are. Yes, yes they are. And Jason Ritter asked us to do an episode about Shia LaBeouf. Uh, that's, dude, I'm sorry, that's not gonna, that's never gonna happen because it would be nothing but f bombs for me every 15 seconds. Uh, it, it's just, he's not worth talking about. I mean, he, we've only done not, not even on, the, on AGU, back in Geekcast Radio's infancy. Nearly four and a half years ago. We've been calling we, him Shia bitch. Well, yeah, but I, I'm trying to reference something else, damn it. <coughs> four and a half years ago, when the Geek Cast Radio podcast started, we tried doing a actor's spotlight on, on William Shatner. And the episode went all right, but we found out that it just wasn't worth... Like, we weren't equipped to talk about that kind of stuff, and... And Shia LaBitch, what has he been in? Even Stevens, the three Transformers movies. He was Holes, in uh, Eagle Eye. Eagle Eye, Holes. But after that, uh, his career kind of took a nosedive because he's yeah. wearing a paper bag on his head and wanting yeah. a, uh, a dick camera. But Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Jason, but no, we'll never... Yeah. The, the last five minutes of, of me talking is us covering Shia LaBitch. Yeah, it'll it'll pretty much never happen. Um, I'm not saying he wasn't good in the things that he was in, like in the past, but after Eagle Eye and Transformers, he kind of just was like, yeah. um, and he lost his mind pretty much after that. He's <laughs> he's playing Charlie Sheen. Yes. Next, he's gonna say he's drinking tiger blood and winning. <laughs> um. So I think we'll take a quick break and come back with the Blitz. Ten Minute Blitz. Ten Minute Blitz. Ten Minute Blitz. Alrighty, people. We will be getting on with the Ten Minute Blitz. Um... Which will run roughly about 10 minutes, not going to... I don't have an actual timer. Well, I, I I don't, but I can look at the clock. But anyway, really quickly, very quickly, this will most likely be covered on MWire coming up on Monday. But I, I have to talk about this for a second. You know what I'd like to see adapted into a feature film? Old Man Logan. I'd love to see old people playing super slash former superheroes instead of these young casts and prequel type stuff Hollywood is doing now. New Fantastic Four cast, Fantastic Flop. I, I have zero, and, 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 and it's not even the fact, it has nothing to do with Michael B. Jordan. 
It has everything to do with the guy that's playing Ben Grimm. I'm sorry. I don't care what anyone says. I enjoyed, as bad as people say they are, and they are a little bit bad, I enjoyed the first two Fantastic Four movies because of Chris Evans as Johnny Storm, which he is now Captain America, and Michael Chiklis as Ben Grimm slash The Thing. Um... I will not be paying any attention to this new Fantastic Four movie because apparently it comes out of the Ultimates comics and I just have zero interest in what they're going to do. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's just not my thing anymore. I agree wholeheartedly with you. So yes. we will be starting the timer in three, two, one. Power Lace is in 2015. It's about damn time. Yes. <laughs> I think that this idea is cool. We so need to have Huey Lewis's back in time playing under our voices right now. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Uh, Nike had announced uh, uh, some special shoe based on the Marty McFly shoe from 2015 and Back to the Future 2 couple of years ago but it didn't come with power laces and then they're like oh just wait till 2015 power laces are coming but nike the nike um advertiser or the the nike designer didn't say whether they're going to be on those shoes or some other shoe so i i i actually can't wait to see this actually come into play mm -hmm. um it's i mean i know that they did the 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 air mag thing where there are you know 1500 of them made and uh i mean it's a cool concept but i i think it'll be cool to have the power laces uh, and see how that actually works um <laughs> i have a feeling that people would be picking those up like crazy once they come out it's gonna it really is gonna depend on the, on the price really um, for me personally, like right now I'm eyeing a couple of pairs of Nike shoes that are like 140 bucks a pair, but I don't, I buy shoes like every five years. So it's not like I'm, <laughs> I'm not like one of these people that go out and, and find all these rare shoes and everything else. So, okay. 10 minute blitz is over. No, that's, that's the end of the next, that segment <laughs> of, of it. Uh, we go on to the next story. Uh, Bruce Tim style Batman the Animated Series figures hmm. by DC Collectibles at New York Toy Fair. Yes, I did see these. I actually saw... I will have to probably send you the link to this, but I saw them in the case uh, with Pixel Dan, because Pixel Dan Early from Pixel-Dan.com was, was at Toy Fair this year. And I saw them, and I was like, oh, very, very cool. Um, so they do have, it's the New new Adventures Batman uh, mm -hmm. figure shown there. And then they have the original animated series Catwoman. Mm -hmm. And in the same wave, they said that they're going to have, uh, it was Mr. Freeze mm -hmm. from the New Adventures, as well as... Um, I forget who the other character was. It was um, it was another villain. Can't remember at the moment. But um, they uh, they also said that there's going to be another wave where they're going to have uh, it's going to be reverse. They're going to have um, instead of having one animated series one, they're going to have uh, one new adventures, and then the rest will be animated series versions. For the next uh, wave. So cool. I have a feeling there's going to be about $20, $25, maybe $30 a piece. Um, yeah. Well, it's DC Collectibles. It probably So uh, it's going to be real hard for me to decide which ones to pick up. I'm obviously going to get Batman um, because I'm a mm -hmm. huge Tim Burr's fan. Um, Catwoman's tempting. Uh, Mr. Freeze is tempting. Uh, although I haven't seen that picture of him yet. Um so I mean, it just it just kind of depends. I know that the Joker will be second wave, yeah, and they'll probably have the actual animated series Batman in that wave, and they'll probably have a Robin or a Nightwing or something. Um, yeah. So it, it'll be interesting to see who they get. Um, yep. Okay. 
moving on. <laughs> what do you have to say about the vanilla ice go ninja go craft mac and cheese? I think it's cool. I I, I really do. I, I mean, turtles are hot right now. Um, so craft getting it on the on because I was wondering like why is he at first when I saw saw the commercial first I'm like why is he even doing this. And then I saw the the pouring of the mac and cheese into the bowl. It's like Ninja Turtle shaped macaroni and cheese. Yay! I think it's cool. I, I, I think it's good. I, Ninja Rap is probably the only turtle song you could have adapted to fit that kind of a commercial. I don't think Turtle Power would have worked um, as awesome as the Turtle Power song is from the original film. Um it's vanilla ice. I mean, it's you know the 2010s. He's got to do something to feel to not not necessarily feel relevant, but he's got to do something to put himself back in the in the limelight. And let's face it, his um, 2000s counterpart Eminem isn't doing much these days. Yeah, well, the funny thing is, vanilla ice has actually been coming back lately. Yes. Um, he was in that Adam Sandler movie. Um, that's my boy. Yep. as the best friend and it was hilarious seeing him on there and I know he was doing a self-help or like not a self-help but a, like a, a house repair show for a yep. while um, so it's kind of funny seeing him do the go ninja go ninja go because um, <laughs> if they found a way to work that into the new movie oh god yes that would be cool Oh god, yes, that would and be. And the funny awesome. thing is, he's wearing green while he's sitting there playing with the mac and cheese, or putting the mac yeah. and cheese on his shelf. And then the yeah. mom starts doing the the dance, and the kids like WTF. Yeah, yeah. the The only thing I find wrong with it is that he finish your thought. He uses he uses the um, he uses the ice ice baby line word to your mother. And I, I get it why he had to do it, because it's the end of the commercial, but it's like, it just, just kind of felt off to me. But anyway. Um, yes. So, yeah. getting to the last one, uh, and this this is, I figured this was the best place to put it for the time being. Mm-hmm. We have Rumor Mill. Oh, no. It's, uh... We're feeding the monster, dude. Stop feeding the monster. Yeah, I know. We're feeding the beast. Um... It's the rumor patrol of Batman vs. Superman Batsuit reveal. Uh, people are having fun with the speculation of it. I'm I'm not going to like rant and rave or anything, but people were trying to say at the beginning of the month that they were hearing that, oh, there's, you know, there's going to be the two Batsuits. Oh, they're going to reveal it in the uh, end of February. And I was like, okay, I mean, I'll believe it when I see it, but... Um, and then they're saying now that, oh, it'll be revealed in March, which I could kind of see because they're going to start shooting. Mm-hmm. So eventually somebody's going to see the damn suit anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's going to get leaked, so they might as well do it officially. Um, directly, you know, from the film set. I mean, rather than have people getting craptastic pictures and ranting and raving about it. Um but I'm I'm curious to see what it looks like. I mean, I'm I'm hoping that it meets the prediction that myself and Mike Powers came up with earlier in the show lifespan. Yeah. So should be interesting. I hope it's not body armor. I hope it's not like. I mean, if it's going to have the the muscles and armor stuff, it's underneath the suit itself, like in the comics. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hoping it's since since they're trying to go for a newer design, since I'm hoping that it's either one of two things. This is just me hoping. It's either new adventures from the Timverse or it's Jim Lee slash Greg Capolo from New Fifty Two ongoing New Fifty Two. Yeah. Yep, that's my thought too. So that covers the Blitz. We'll be right back after this for the topic of the show. Go Ninja, go Ninja, go. Go Ninja, go Ninja, go. Go, 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 go. Go Ninja, go Ninja. Go, 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 go Ninja.
ninja, go ninja, go, go ninja, go ninja, go, go ninja, go ninja, go, 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 go. go, go Word to go, your mother. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to jump in that DeLorean and travel back to the 1980s to talk about 80s television. That's right. Over the next, hopefully, if I'm still around, if if Mike Powers still needs me to fill in, over the next f- four episodes of the show, starting here, Part of our main topic will be talking about a different decade of television, starting with the 80s and going up to now. And the 80s, TV in the 80s was awesome. It really was. You had so many different things you could watch, whether it be syndicated cartoons from the 60s and like the Jetsons and the Flintstones, or Scooby and Scrappy, or Space Ghost, or any of that kind of stuff. Television itself... You had the Cosby Show, you had ALF, you had Cheers, you had Night Court, you had Knight Rider, Airwolf, A-Team, Magnum P.I., Matlock. TV in the 80s was just, like, when I was growing up, television was a special thing. Not saying, I mean, we had two TVs in our house, but one was in my mom's bedroom, the other one was in the living room. So, you know, I would always watch TV, and I would always watch cartoons, all the TV shows I just mentioned. Everything about the decade of the 80s with television was just absolutely amazing. Even even MTV was great back then. <laughs> you mean it actually played music? Yes. Oh my god, you have no idea how... <laughs> um, I pretty much obsessed over the video for Hall & Oates' song Out of Touch, the extended version, because it has a... It has an extended drum solo in it, and I was like, oh my god, when is the video coming back on? Hurry up, hurry up! Um, But no, there's so, like, take ALF for example. Anyone that didn't love ALF, there's something wrong with you. There really, really is. Well, ALF was funny. Yes, of course, it was one of those, an actual sitcom, a comedy you could sit down to watch. Unlike some of the comedies of today, where they try to go for... The gross humor or the the gay humor um, or just something so over the top that it it just doesn't like the and I know this is going to sound like I'm preaching here, but I'm sorry. The only comedy I watch now that is actually from the 2000s into the 2010s is The Big Bang Theory. I don't care what anyone says about it being for the everyman or being, you know, oh, well, it, it doesn't portray geeks properly or it doesn't get the science right or it doesn't do this or it doesn't do that or, oh, heaven forbid it, get D&D things wrong. I don't care. As much as I dislike at least one of the characters, which is Sheldon for the most part, I mean, he's kind of grown on me, but I really, he's not one of my favorites. Anytime that show's on... Any episode, there's at least one thing in every episode that I can laugh at. And I can't say that for a lot of comedies today, but back in the 80s, oh my god. Cosby Show had you laughing all the way. ALF had you laughing all the way. Even though as a kid I didn't get a lot of it, but All in the Family was was simply amazing because Archie Bunker is one of the one of the best people ever. Um I absolutely loved television in the 80s. It was just, it was so great. Yeah, there were a lot of shows that were kind of iconic. And also at the time, uh, a lot of those shows tended to have uh, actual theme songs. Yes. Whereas nowadays, it's kind of a rare commodity. You don't really see that. Um, Mm -hmm. The 90s even still kind of had them. They they started well, phasing out about ninety six and then they started kind of disappearing completely and just being like a real quick jingle and intro right into the show, whereas um a lot of the eighties had a lot of very memorable uh mm-hmm. themes and uh kind of imagery to go along with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um it was just one of those decades where You know, a lot of people say, oh, well, my parents just sat me down in front of the TV and I rotted my brain away for eight or nine hours or whatever else. And I can see that happening today because of the invention of reality television. 
back in the 80s, as I said, it, it was not only a special thing, but it was a, a real enjoyment. Now, I know a lot of people enjoy television today, um, or else it wouldn't be watched. But back then, like, I, all the little lessons, all the little life lessons, I learned from The Cosby Show. You know, I, I specifically remember, I, I believe it was season one. I don't know which episode it was. Like, I don't know which episode number or whatever else it was, but it was the Hall- it was one of the Halloween episodes where before they went out, Cos, or, well, Cliff said to, said to Rudy, okay, you got two bags. You got a purple bag for the houses that you know and a red bag for the houses that you don't. And after seeing that episode, I always had two different bags for going trick-or-treating. That actually you know, makes a was, lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it was just one of those things where, you know, m- oh my God, moments now. E- even now as an adult, the Cosby show is just amazing. The, I, I'll, I'll never forget it. The episode where Elvin and Sandra come back after getting married and whatever else. And he's let, he's left law school to do, to open some wilderness store and, and Sandra has also left law school, and, and Claire just goes off. <laughs> She's like, I want my money, and I want it now. You owe us X of a... Oh, God. Uh, it's it's just so enjoyable. It really, really is. Um, Cheers, the same thing. Okay, sure. Cheers is about a bar in Boston. It's about all these guys and a couple of girls coming into this bar, but... Who can sit there and tell me out of the listeners that you didn't tune in every night or every week to see the adventures of Sam Malone, former player of the Boston Red Sox, Cliff Clavin, Norm, Carla, I, I mean, Rhea Perlman, oh my god, so hilarious in that show. And then that show obviously had Fraser Crane and, and his wife Lilith, and that would go on to their show in the 90s with Fraser. Um the eighties was a perfect melting pot of television gold to me. I actually watched quite a few shows for the eighties, which actually surprised me. <laughs> um, being that I was born in the tail end of the eighties. Yes. Um, but a lot of the shows from the eighties actually continued on it in the early nineties. So with that, um, I remember watching Elf. It's just it's one of those cool, crazy alien Muppets. Um, I, I just, I, I thought that that was kind of a cool concept. Um, I remember watching the Cosby show. Uh, a lot of his shows were funny, uh, no matter, you know, what really happened. I mean, I know there were a couple different iterations of it, and I know he's trying to come back with a new one now. Um, yeah. Yeah. But just a lot of the quips that would go on, a lot of the uh, um, interactions between the family members, um, his mm. facial reactions were a lot of it. Uh, and the guest stars. I mean, they had episodes with Stevie Wonder. They had a young Adam Sandler guest star in there, and he was a scrawny little kid. <laughs> yeah, he was. Um, they had the guy that played Rex from uh, Toy Story in it. Oh yeah, uh, Wallace Shawn. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm. Uh, I, yeah, I, Cosby Show was so great. And another um, another episode that was so great was how they. There was one episode where Claire got injured, and she was determined to go have this night on in the town. And they basically dressed her her cast up. To. <laughs> To be a fashion uh, statement. And it was simply, simply awesome. It really, really was. Um, um, kind of continuing on some of the kind of comedy family elements. Uh, family Matters and uh, Full House um, yeah. were two that I, I watched quite a bit. Um, and uh, pretty much everybody remembers those two shows. Uh, Full House because yeah. you just have the... The three, the three guys kind of running the, the whole family. 
Um, and then, you know, and this year they, they finally had kind of reunions of sorts in, uh, in Dan and Okio's commercial uh, and Jimmy Fallon. Yep. Uh, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, haven't really changed the look too much. I mean, they've obviously gotten older, but they still pretty much look like they did there. Um, but that show was pretty funny. Uh, just the dynamics that would go on in between it, the life lessons. Uh, same thing with Family Matters. Uh, one of the key elements was you had Carl Winslow and um, <laughs> Steve Urkel. Those were like my two favorite characters of that show. Yeah. Uh, because they were kind of, it was a love hate relationship between the two of them. Well, mm-hmm. more so because of Carl, but uh, Urkel, yeah. you know, just couldn't stand, or, or uh, yeah. Carl couldn't stand Urkel, even though it, sometimes he could get along with him for the sake of whatever that given plot was. Mm-hmm. Um, I I found it real real fun watching that show as it went along uh, as well. Yeah. It was really interesting for me when they did the whole. Um... Steve Stefan angle where he had a some sort of personality machine that turned him into an actual real person that Laura actually would want to date. Uh, yeah, I Basically. thought it was kind of it was a nice nutty professor kind of aspect to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, very much so. And the the one um, where Carl actually became the nerdy guy. Like yes. stepping into it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> It's 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 so weird seeing um yeah but yeah no that, that show was awesome uh um, the other thing re- really quickly that I want to mention about the Cosby Show I was I was trying to mention it earlier but I had to find it um you know the Cosby Show and the Thundercats have a have a common thread who would that be Earl Hyman is Panthro Grandpa Huxtable is Panthro on the Thundercats on the original Thundercats show. Huh. <laughs> yep. Interesting. It was very, very awesome. Um, what were some of your other favorite 80s shows? You know, I know people are probably going to give me flack for this, but uh, I really love Dallas. It was a Friday night soap on CBS. J.R. Ewing is the single best, most hated yet most loved villain on television ever. Like, J.R. Ewing knew how to be a good villain and still make you love him. Uh, Just all of that. And then now with the Revival series, with the continuation of the current current series, it's just absolutely amazing. Um, Let me see here. What else? Um, Different Strokes. How can you not know Different Strokes? How, How can you not know what you're talking about, Willis? I mean, how can you not know Gary Coleman as Arnold? Uh, absolutely love that. Um, what other stuff? Uh, Silver Spoons was another good one with Ricky Schroeder. Um, of course, Saved by the Bell happened. Uh, so there's that. That was, you know, that was very, very cool. Uh, let me see here. Different Strokes, Silver Spoons, Facts of Life. Facts of Life was awesome. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care if anybody makes fun of me about that. I'm sorry. Facts of Life was great. It was really awesome. Uh, I absolutely loved the plots, and I loved uh, Trudy. Trudy was my favorite character. She was always really spunky and kind of in your face. Um, It was very cool. Uh, I'm trying to think what other ones is there. I wasn't really into Dukes of Hazzard. Um... Family Ties. Well, Family Ties and Alf, I would say, are two very polar opposites. But for me, they kind of were the the family shows I needed to watch at the time. I mean, who doesn't love Alex P. Keaton? I mean, a kid in the 80s playing that character that wanted to be a politician, that wanted to get into politics. That was simply awesome. Uh, and just the way that he carried himself and the way the parents were, and I just absolutely loved it. Um, I'm going to ramble mm-hmm. off some of the shows that I, I watched with my parents um, that I could kind of take it or leave it. Um, yeah. Happy Days, uh, Quantum Leap, Roseanne, The Waltons, The Wonder Years, uh, mm-hmm. 
not to discount any of them. I just they weren't my personal favorites. Um, yeah. Some of the ones that I did find to be um, interesting are I I loved the A team. Yeah. Um, the uh, it's probably one of the best kind of comedic crime action dramas that was on in the eighties. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, I know there were a lot of them, uh, but I, I really liked that show just because it's a ragtag group of uh, guys that were kind of um, having to deal with issues, you know, obviously for for hire, but um, they kind of remind me of the starting group of the Beast Wars cast. Yeah, they really <laughs> because, are. Because you have Hannibal as like Primal, you have, uh, mm-hmm. um, you know, Baracus is like kind of like Dinobot. Yeah. Um, Howling Mad Murdock is almost like um, Rat Trap, and then mm-hmm. Face is like Cheetor. Yeah. So I mean, it's it it kind of gives me that effect when watching it, but now, but um, I, I enjoyed it. Um, Married with Children still funny. Uh, Al Bundy is still reading the same newspaper, <laughs> even in yep. his new show. Yep. I don't know if you've seen that image or not. Yes, I have. I've I, seen that. I found that online, and I thought that was hilarious. He's reading the same newspaper for 20 years. Um, <laughs> yep. MASH was pretty good. Uh, it's one of those ones I can watch in small doses. Yeah, um, very small doses. Uh, Mork and Mindy, I like it because of Robin Williams. Yep. Nano, nano. Um, and he gets to be kind of crazy just because it's him. Yes, yes, it is. Um, so I, I enjoy it for that reason alone. Uh, of course, Saved by the Bell. Everybody knows it. Everybody loves it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I would say my favorite '80s show, The Muppet Show. <laughs> yes, exactly. I love the music for it. The theme song. I love the Muppets. I love all the characters. I love the voices and the the things that go on. It's such a perfect show. And the best part is, my son loves it. <laughs> Drives my wife nuts because she doesn't really Yay! care. Well, because she's like, I want to watch an educational. I says it is educational. They learn that they can't hit each other. <laughs> and Fozzie's not funny, and Gonzo's greedy, and Miss Piggy is. You know, think she's like bacon, hot. Um, yep. Uh, and then you got <laughs> Kermit. Pigs who's... in the oven. Baked in space. <laughs> um, <laughs> wow. Um, and then you get Kermit the Frog here and. Uh, He's such a wonderful part of the show. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's that's one of my favorite shows. And then, of course, the revival that it's having nowadays um, oh, yeah. just goes to show you everything old again it, or old is new again. Yeah. Even Elf had a revival in the Radio Shack commercial. Yeah, he did. So I mean, it's it's the the eighties were definitely iconic for television. Yes, yes, they were. Uh, you know, even stuff like, even though Seinfeld is a very '90s show, it premiered in 1989. That boggles my mind, since most of it is so '90s. Uh, you know, Small Wonder. I remember watching Small Wonder all the time. Uh, Taxi. I remember watching that. Three's Company. No one could beat Jack. No one could beat Jack Trevor at anything. Uh, absolutely love that. Um, who's the boss? You know, you want you want to talk about revivals or revival of or a good idea to revive that's actually a show done well. Okay, who's the boss? Is Tony Danza as Tony? I believe Alyssa Milano played his daughter. I could be wrong on that. I'm not looking it up, but um, and it's uh, Judith Light who plays Angela and her. She has a son named Jonathan. He comes in. He's the nanny of the house. He takes care of everything that she needs him to take care of. And here it is almost 30-something years later, and you have Melissa Joan Hart, who is coming off of 
Clarissa fame, Sabrina the Teenage Witch fame, she and Joey Lawrence from Blossom, they start a show called Melissa and Joey. It's the exact, it's like Who's the Boss 2.0, but it's just as amazing as what, Who's the Boss to the 80s is what Melissa and Joey is to what, you know, the standards are now. And it's just, some revivals are really great. Some other revivals, not so much. Uh, you know, you take Knight Rider, for example, very quickly, take Knight Rider. In the 90s, they tried to do Team Knight Rider. It didn't work over so well. You go to 2008, and they tried to make a sequel series. It worked. For the most part, it worked. But it didn't really gain as much popularity as NBC was hoping, so they kind of just dropped the ball on it. Um, but now, overall, 80s television, I grew up, I, you know, for, you know, I... I just like everybody else, I, I went through, you know, K through six and, you know, and then, you know, middle school and high school. But I also got an education by watching television. Uh, I will also say that, um, that with educational programming in the 80s, I mean, Sesame Street, Mr. Rogers, all that stuff, uh, you know, we also learned from that, but I mean, television in the '80s was absolutely awesome. It really, really was. Yeah, I I definitely agree with you. I I don't think that. I mean, and we'll get into that when we cover the '90s too. But I think yeah. that the '80s and the '90s are pretty much the the highlight. They kind of, yeah. Well, they kind of blur. See, this is the thing. Like I said, with Seinfeld, well, a lot of it's I, overlapping. It, that's what I'm. That, that's what I kind of mean by blurring. Uh, you look at Full House. That started in '87 and, and ended in '95, and it's a combination of both decades in the show topics and in the show episodes, and it's simply awesome. Whereas now, you know, a show that might have started in 2004 or five that might still be going today, it uh, they television today is a whole different. A whole different monster, and we'll we'll get into that in the in the upcoming episodes. Um, so, yeah, there is that. But no, this is going to be fun talking about the other three, three three decades and stuff of TV. Yeah, definitely. So, I think that about wraps it up. Yep. So. Thank you, as always, for joining us here on Altered Geek Unlimited. You can contact us in the following ways. You can call the voicemail line, 502-526-5821. You can email us, feedback at geekcastradio.com. You can visit the episode post on geekcastradio.com. You can visit the Facebook fan page by searching Geekcast Radio Network. You can contact us on Twitter at geekcastradio, hashtag Altered Geek. My Twitter. Twitter handle is at SCP21, and yours is, sir? Get you and Mike. So, as always, get altered, get geeky with the altered geeks. See you next time.